All right, so on your deadlift position is everything. So when you're first coming up to the bar and getting yourself ready, before you actually pull it off the ground, your position is very, very critical as far as maintaining your form on the way up and having a good pull. Again, I like to start people on the hex bar because their knee position and ability to keep on straight bar path is much harder when you're starting until you get it figured out and have that muscle memory and easier on the hex bar when you're first starting. So what I do is I'll get a line, so I'll pull this guy back, and we'll set our feet in. Before we do anything to figure out someone's foot position, the easiest way I've found is you have someone kneel, tell them to jump, they come up, and wherever their feet land, you mark it, that's their standard conventional position. That's an easy way to tell what their general center of balance is. So for me, I happen to know that because I deadlift a lot. My feet are about here. Some people will go toes out. Whenever possible, try to get toes in. We're going to set our heels back on this line. One thing to watch out for is people pulling heels back one side or the other and favoring a side. We want to try to keep these dead centered. We can take the bar and we'll roll it into position if we need to if it's off. For right now, this is pretty good. When we go to pull, we want to have our hands in the middle and pretend that this bar goes all the way across to line it up on the front of our shins. Now we want to sit down into our deadlift and flatten our back out. What we don't want is to look up too far to try to keep our chest up with our pull because we're going to have a flat spine and then kink it at the end. The issue with that is it cuts off nerves and makes it a much harder pull. We want that back to be completely flat the whole way through the deadlift. So I'll actually look down or forwards to get good head position. Next thing what we want to do is make sure that the entire time, at no point we're our back ever around. So we never want to pull and roll this way. We want straight back position the whole time. It's going to hinge and come up. On sumo, you're going to be more upright. On conventional, you are going to have some twist and then a pivot as you drive up. Next thing what we want to do is make sure we take the slack out of the bar. What we don't want is to have a jerk like this and try to pull. It's like taking a boat, having your line, and then a tube at the end, having it all wound up, and then launching. What happens is you go, 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 and then jerk. We want a smooth pull. Slowly take the tension until it's tight, and then pull from there. So let's say we need 65 pounds of force or 66 pounds of force to get a click in the bar. We're going to go until we hear that click and then we're going to know that we're ready to lift. So you want to take that tension out until you hear that click. You want to hear that click and then you're going to be set to go. Next piece is we want to engage our lats. This is part of our upper back. We want to squeeze those back. Another reason that I like the hex bar when someone's starting is it's easier from the side-by-side -side suitcase carry to squeeze your lats when you're getting ready to pull. Whereas in front, it's a much more complicated movement for someone that's not used to the deadlift. We want to think about taking our pinkies and rolling them in. That's going to seat our shoulder and get our back tight, ready to pull. We want to do this before we come down to the bar. The descent is very important. Take our breath at the top and squeeze our lats down. That's gonna get us in the position ready to descend. If we don't have a good descent, the ascent part is not going to go well. So we'll kind of put everything together. Breath out at the top, hold, and then back down. As we come down, you can drop the bar or you can come down with it. Unless we're doing negatives where we have a slow pull our slow descent, really that's, you're not too worried about that piece unless you're specifically focusing on it. We're worried about getting it up. Okay, a couple other pieces on our conventional deadlift. This is going to be easier on the ground and harder at lockout. So the ground is from where we are now up until about the knees. That's our ground period. And then the lockout is going to be from knees up where we're going to really try to fire glutes and lock our legs forwards. It's very, very important to finish that, build your glutes as well as get a complete lift. If you're powerlifting, you have to do that in order to get lockout. So when we go to do this, make sure we fight it off the floor. Another thing I had talked about previously is if you've never done this before, the weight's not going to come up as easily as if you just curl with a 10 or a 20 or a 30, what have you. So just keep with the lift and fight all the way through. Another piece that we want to focus on on the deadlift is making sure that we pull off the ground without shooting our hips. 
So if we come to the side here and we watch, what I don't want to do is straighten my legs out and create a, Roma a Romanian deadlift. A Romanian deadlift or a straight legged deadlift, which is essentially the same thing, is going to be hamstring heavy and that is a different accessory lift and you won't lift as much. So what we don't want to do is this. Do that because I have the strength to do it, but it's not creating full body center. So what we want to do is keep our hips down and force ourselves to stay as much upright as we can as we hinge forwards. So in the more correct way, that will keep my keep my hips seated as I go to fire forwards. Make sure we're engaging our glutes off the floor because that's going to help us get it up as well as keep them tight for the lockout. As I said before, the descent is very important. You want to make sure you have everything locked out all the way through. Similar to your bench when you're lifting, if your triceps aren't engaged, a common failure point that people will see in their bench is they'll come down, they'll be quick up to about the halfway mark and they won't be able to lock it out because those triceps aren't ready to fire. You're trying to engage them and by that time it's already too late. So what we want to do is make sure they're tight off the floor. The way we do this is as we come down, we try to think about pushing our knees out. I'll even put a band on someone in order to force them to keep their knees out. Same with squat, because we need that glute engagement. Just remember, we're trying to create full body synergy. Get that whole body working together as one unit to create optimal force. So if we come down, squeeze here, and then think about forcing those knees out. On a regular bar, I'll even touch, and when I feel tension, that's when I know I'm ready to go. On a hex bar, you're not going to want to go all the way out because that's not good for our knees. We want to keep them just straight over our ankles, but we want to think about engaging our glutes and forcing them out. So we'll put it together. You can tell if someone is or is not engaging their glutes by their knee wall. So if I don't engage my glutes, this is what it's going to look like. Notice that as my knees come up, they wobble. It's going to be the similar or same thing as when someone's squatting and they come down. Your knees are going to move in and out as you're going. We don't want that. We want to create that full body synergy and get those glutes engaged. Another thing that we're going to look for is our weight. Where are we leaning? Forwards, backwards, middle. So what we want is the bar to come straight up. So on the hex bar, what we want to think about is the side knurling. If that bar were to go all the way through, we want it to have a straight descent or a straight ascent up. We don't want any curve. So if I'm too far forwards, or the bar is tucked in too tight and can't clear my knees, we're going to get a curved J pattern similar to like a bench, and we don't want that. So here's an example of what we don't want. That's a curve, and we want to avoid that. So one of the things we can do is sit back into our heels as we go to lift up. That's going to create stability, as well as give us a better lift. So we put it together. You get a much straighter path than that J curve, which is what we're looking for. I'm going to start with the client. We first address their mobility and their strength. So they're going to need the back strength, as well as the glute hamstring strength, to be able to get that basic form. One of the first things that I do to help with that, when we're on the hex bar, is swap the 45 for the bumper plate like we addressed earlier, decreasing the weight by about 70 pounds. That's going to help a lot when we're first starting. The next thing that we're going to go ahead and do to assess where the strength is at, is do a 5x5. Five five. So I'll run usually 5 weeks, working up to working sets, the 5 sets, with five reps a piece. When they can do that under weight consi consistently, then we'll consider transferring them over to a regular bar. That'll give us enough time to address their form as well as build the capacity in order to lift heavier.